Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. Sorry. Uh, we wanted to do this quick demonstration. My colleague Thomas is back there. He's looking at that, imp that box, and if you were to stand up and look at it, you'll see that box is closed. It's got a brown front to it. But he's able to see what's inside of it, and he's able to actually actuate the, the tanks. If Thomas, or yeah, Thomas, you can go ahead and click whatever you want. Um, we can get the information, uh, and this is just a demonstration box. I want to go ahead and do the demo first in case it craps out. And we can just move right along and act like it didn't happen. But he's able to turn on those solenoid valves to transfer the, the direction of the water. He's able to turn the pumps on down there. Uh, this is the first time he's put this on and tried it, so it is a little bit of a learning curve. So he's learning exactly where to hit it. Uh, and the animation may not match up exactly with what's happening with the pump, but if you were to take the front off of it, you'll actually see that the water is moving from one side to the other. You're seeing the actual flow come out of those three meters that are on there. Uh, and the whole point of this is, this is where we've gotten to now with what we're doing for our clients. Um, when we build infrastructure, we're designing into that uh, engineering a way to future-proof their facilities. You know, they're spending $100 million on a water wastewater treatment facility, and we're building in the ability to uh, have them upgrade their facilities eventually to take the model that we create for the conceptual model to the design model to the construction model and all the way into operations and maintenance. So just a little example and uh, the auto lid is not on so you're still seeing the animations and you should see just the equipment with the actual water and stuff going through. You're not because we hit the wrong button on there. but. Thank you, Thomas, I appreciate that. I'm gonna move along and go ahead and get into the PowerPoint. And by the way, that'll be back there. And if anybody wants to do it themselves at the break, take a look at it and see what it looks like from behind because you're, you're not getting a flat image, obviously, you're getting a three-dimensional image. So, CDM Smith, we have offices here in Germany as well as the United States. We provide solutions for water environment, transportation, engineering facilities. Um, we do a lot of stuff, but mainly infrastructure. <coughs> Now, as I'm sure everyone in this room knows, technology isn't just a straight line. You know, if you look at where we are uh, since the iPhone came out, which was kind of a pivotal moment, um, the ability for our clients to keep up with that uh, and for the municipalities and the government entities that we, we deal with, there's such, a, there's such a gap between where technology is, where we are as individuals, and where organizations and public entities are. Now, because of that gap, uh, if you don't close that gap somehow, which is done in many ways, but one of the ways that we're doing it is through digital disruption and through the investment of digital technologies that will allow us to help our clients close that gap. If you don't close that gap, bad things happen, and those bad things vary depending on the industry you're in. So we've made some significant investments in to some technologies that you're probably familiar with. Mixed reality, uh, LIDAR scanning, use of drones, machine learning, digital twins, and the Internet of Things. Um, all of these technologies and some more that we're working with that aren't on here, they have kind of a synergy to them. Uh, and one thing that's common among all of them, uh, one thing that we think is going to be um, something that's gonna be very important is visualization. Being able to connect technology with science, because we do a lot of scientific work um, with uh, engineering principles and designs uh, with things. And so we think visualization is going to be kind of a platform that is going to marry and tie a lot of that stuff together. And we opted to go with mixed reality. Um, when I was back in 2015, I was about to sign a deal with a company that actually is represented here, and I'm sorry, I won't tell you who that is. The guy was not happy with me. Uh, and the reason I didn't sign it is because Microsoft announced the HoloLens, and I thought, oh, that can't be true. But I waited, and I went and did a demonstration, and after I did the demonstration, I decided it was a better fit for us. Um, and why? And it, we design things. We build a 3D model for anything that we create. So um, it just was a good fit. Uh, obviously, you know what the HoloLens is. This is still a development kit. The new one is coming out. And maybe people in here know a lot more than, than I do about the next version, but everybody's heard it's going to be more powerful. It's going to be 
you know, a, a wider uh, view. Uh, and there's going to be some interesting features that that are rumored. Uh, I personally can't wait for it to come out. We've got some big plans. Uh, we are an early innovator in mixed reality. We've done a lot with it for in a short time. We were probably a year and a half too early uh, with what we did. And our partner is Object Theory and uh, Michael Hoffman, who presented at 1.30 on the main stage, uh, the founder of Object Theory, is uh, someone we've been working with since day one. They were the first mixed reality agency, and we were their first customer. And um, what I believe this is leading to is a fundamental shift in not only how we interact with computers and the environment and the space around us, but also how we're going to do design and design review. Right now, we're using the HoloLens to do design review, to go into these full-scale three-dimensional spaces. But there are folks out there working on applications where you will be able to actually change design. Now, I think this is a fantastic technology because we're visual creatures. You know, our brains crave digital content. 80%, 90% of the information your brain processes comes in through your eyes. 30% of the neurons or the gray matter, uh, neurons in the, in the gray matter are made up to process visualization. Touch and hearing is only 8 and 3%. Um, and with the way our kids are growing up these days and with the way the new workforce is, is coming in, a lot of them learn by seeing. They don't learn by reading. They don't learn by doing. A lot of them are on videos all day. And we really believe visualization is going to be key to that next generation of workforce. So our journey started out in January when we saw Microsoft announce it. We tried it hands-on in June of 2015. We entered into a development engagement with Object Theory. And we created the world's first mixed reality collaboration platform where we could go in together inside the models at scale, see each other, hear each other's voice, and collaborate. We then created the IoT, IoT proof of concept, which is back there. It's two years old this month. Uh, first use of the HoloLens on a project to support it was in December 2016. The first time we took drone data, low resolution, photogrammetry, not LiDAR. Love to do LiDAR. LiDAR Can't talk today. Um, but obviously, you guys know the HoloLens can only handle so much data. Uh, what's powerful for us is you know, we, we manage a lot of projects for construction. Uh, and rather than taking videos and writing reports and taking pictures with our iPhones, we fly the drone once a week. We create the low-res 3D model. And we decimate it some. And then we send that out to the guys who are in charge of making sure that project is on time and on budget. And they can see how much dirt has been moved, how much concrete has been poured, or how much steel has been erected. Now, they don't make it full scale, because when you make it full scale in those types of models, it doesn't look very good. But they can make it the size of this room and physically walk around it. And it's very powerful. It's very visceral. Their, their brains, because we're 3D creatures, that stereoscopic view allows them to really connect with it and understand more intuitively what's going on. Uh, 2017 April was the first time we used it for public outreach and stakeholder engagement. We went to one of our clients in Texas and um, we were there for three or four weekends in a row where the public came in and they were able to walk through several design options for an intersection with bridges and, and things. And again, they're able to walk through at scale. <coughs> Knowledge transfer. Uh, we're building now and, and continuing to build uh, applications that many people have already talked about here. In our particular industries, uh, people are retiring from water and wastewater treatment facilities that we help build and, and operate and, and advise our clients with. A lot of people, for some reason, don't want to work in wastewater. Um, but we're capturing that knowledge through video capture and playing it back uh, through the HoloLens uh, on the job to help bring up those new people, give them the information that's relevant, and also put in things like 3D models and PDFs and, and tie it back to asset management and such. And we just uh, switched in June to Object Theory's new PRISM platform, uh, which is a a more enhanced version of what we created with them back two, two and a half years ago. So this is what it looks like. Uh, some of you may have seen this video. That's me in the center. I was in Raleigh. That guy on the right was in Orlando, and the guy on the left was in Portland. Um, 
And through this, we were able to show that we could do tabletop and immersive full-scale collaboration, remote viewing of the model from participants, avatars to represent people, um, the eye gaze, you know, it's very important to be able to say, this is what I'm looking at. Uh, you know, be able to create measurements, say create measure, and it takes the drawing diameters or dimensions right off of the plans and show you the distance between those walls, annotate in a 3D space, which isn't the most helpful thing, uh, because when you're drawing in a 3D space, it's actually in a 3D space, and unless you're really good at drawing, it ends up looking like a big squiggly line. But we're also able to do large map navigation, so I have a 100 acre, acre toll plaza we did for a client, and uh, you can stand there and teleport your way through the entire design. And uh, live spatial audio chat, uh, including the audio. Audio is very helpful. Um, it's a very good element to add to your, your uh, mixed reality experiences. And the last thing I will say is we can leave notes anywhere we want by saying a key phrase, having it, type it out, another key phrase. You then have that note there for someone else to review. So when we first started this, our idea was to use this as part of our virtual design and construction process to help that collaborative process. Um, and mixed reality, we imagined, would be just another tool for that. And just like LiDAR scanning and drones and virtual and augmented reality, which we use as well, um, it is a fantastic tool. But we found it was so much more than just a part of the VDC tool. Uh, through using HoloLens, we're able to have an impact on projects earlier on where making changes have uh, less of a financial impact. Uh, and because you're able to affect it early on and make better decisions, quicker decisions, because you're experiencing it spatially in the real world with your stakeholders at the same time, wherever they are, uh, you're going to have less of a punch list. You're going to have less change orders. Growing all together. This is uh, something that we've identified as a very crucial need that our clients have. In uh, the infrastructure world, uh, we need to, we have an aging infor infrastructure, we have an aging workforce, and using mixed reality uh, as tools, we can affect what people think about the value of the infrastructure. I've, I've been to many places with the HoloLens and taken someone to a, uh, a dam or a bridge or a water treatment facility and have them walk around it at scale and have never been there and they're being asked to, to pay $40 million for this thing and they've seen the 2D or the 3D fly through, but it's on a 2D screen. Trust me, when you walk that uh, city commissioner through that model at scale and they're able to walk through with the other person who looks at an avatar and they hear them talking in their head, um, it's very powerful, it's very engaging. I've been to traffic meetings where people were mad because they're building a highway through their neighborhood and they're still mad in the end, but because they're able to see that sound wall in their backyard and see it to scale, and they're m enamored with the technology, you, you at least have an in with them. You're able to talk to them and have a conversation. So uh, here are the main use cases for us. Uh, after we, we didn't have a device, we, six months, we, you know, we, after we actually saw the device, it was six months before we got our hands on one. And during that six months, we figured out what we thought would be the yes, best use case based on what we thought we knew about the HoloLens. And there were no APIs, there were no development kits. Our, our guys created it all from scratch. But collaboration was a big thing for us. And internally, as I said, it was focused towards getting our designers to uh, relate to our constructors. Uh, so many times you design something, you hand it off to someone to construct it, whether they're internal folks or, or a partner, and there's a big disconnect. But using this as a tool really helps to identify those issues early on. Stakeholder buy-in, again, it's just a fabulous tool for getting people to understand um, how it can help. But probably the best one on here for us is knowledge and experience. Uh, again, we build infrastructure that could be anything from an airport to bridge, water, and wastewater. When you're able to put the HoloLens on someone who's going to operate a facility that you're designing, uh, they're able to give you actual feedback. They're able to say, okay, why is this wheel valve at 10 feet? There's no way I'm going to get that without a ladder. Can you move it down to 6 feet? Something they don't usually catch when they're doing a 3D fly-through 
on a 2D screen. And lots of examples of that. Public outreach, already mentioned. Uh, sales and marketing, I will not mention the numbers here, but I can tell you that the HoloLens is a fantastic uh, sales tool Essentially, at CDM Smith, we're using it to sell work and we're using it to do work. Uh, we still do traditional cross-checking of you know, blueprints that are created from the designs. We still use CAD software like Navisworks to do cross-checking uh, to see what conflicts are there. But we're also walking through it at full scale and seeing the same thing or something different that you may not have caught. Here's an example. This is three years old, well, two and a half. This is the first uh, thing we put in for a client uh, as part of a, a proposal, actually. And in this particular video, it's being recorded from the PC to get a broader view, but you're still limited to that window, the mixed reality window from the HoloLens. But you can see, even three years ago, we had a pretty good level of detail. Uh, and in this particular scenario, this gentleman was in his basement working on his computer uh, wearing a HoloLens. And I was at the beach on vacation. We were creating this video for, for the, our folks to take to the client. Uh, and it's going to run for a minute, and I'm going to let it just play for a second for two reasons. One, uh, we're not moving. He's just tapping the floor. And now he's decided to, you know, I tapped the floor and, and landed on top of him. Right down here, it's going to try and redraw the room, and it's going to flicker a lot. And I leave that because HoloLens at this point is not capable of doing everything. It can't process all the stuff. But it does a pretty good job and so you'll see over here it's trying to draw the stuff that's in the other room. The other reason I like to show this and I'm getting ready to turn it after this is because it took me about two years before I realized how short this person was and it's because he was sitting in a chair and I was too. Never realized it but he's a shorty. So anyway um, we can go wherever we want. We can go up the stairs and you'll notice he does it in just one or two clicks. It's not VR it's MR. Uh, and we can fly around anywhere we want. I'm going to show you another example. This is just a very static example. Very simple but powerful example for, um, for the folks who were doing this. Two were in the same city. I'm actually standing there with the HoloLens on my head. And it's recording from the PC next to me. I was in a different city. And there's two other people in here. There's another bus stop two miles down the road, which you can teleport to. Now I've made it more interesting. I put a helicopter at the end of the road because people like to walk to things. So, But they were able to review the concept of this transit stop and really understand it better from the point of view of the rider because they're immersed in it. And lastly, this is about a, a year old, maybe a year and a half. It's a biosolids waste facility for one of our clients. And again, this is, I think, Revit, right out of Revit. And it was about a 80% design. You can see there's some light blue structure over there to the left that wasn't coming through. Don't know what those materials were, but just created this as part of a design review for them. And these are just some videos of, as the, of that hour long, I think it was a 90 minute session where they were able to walk around together. Again, um, this person in purple had never done HoloLens and they were, she was kind of afraid and she basically just turned in circles. But she wasn't the one that needed to give most of the impact or feedback. It was the, the guy in the yellow was the guy that was going to be operating the facility. And one of the very first things he says is, is that wheel valve that's next to his head is like, this is too high. Can't we redesign this? Absolutely. I can't change the filter over here when he was over here in these tanks. I can't change the filter here. Can we reorient this? Yeah, works, works for me. Um, just an example there. Uh, we also take the drone data, as I was saying, and can immerse ourselves uh, in a room size environment to get a better view of it. That's just some drone data of a, of a piece of uh, a facil facility. So the benefits to us is client engagements off the charts, um, promotes a common understanding of designs, early identification of issues. Uh, it leads to more reliable construction plans and less rework and less change orders and less punch list. Um, to be able to get the stakeholders and the public engaged is very powerful. It facilitates a fantastic user input from the guys who are going to operate these facilities. Most of them don't get involved, and if they do, it's here's a video of a 3D model where someone's flying through it on a computer. 
And it's tremendously helpful to be able to immerse yourself in it instead of just looking at it on a 2D screen. <coughs> uh, it gives you those intuitive insights that your brain is going to catch that you're not going to catch just looking at a 2D screen. Better in timelier decisions. And it really does encourage confidence and trust in the process when the client is able to walk through the design and experience it for themselves. <laughs> and improve, improved accountability overall. So what's next for us? This is uh, something we storyboarded out three years ago, and we're still working on different aspects of this. But the idea is smart facilities control, which I'm sure a lot of people here are talking about, interested in. Um, and that IoT proof of concept was, was a first step to prove we could do it on a small scale, and we're now working with clients to do it on a, a larger scale, small, small parts of their facilities. Um, this is still years away, and there's still lots of low-hanging fruit that we can, we can help our clients with before then. Uh, here's an example of, of what we just showed you live a few minutes ago. Um, had a lot of issues trying to show the live demo. So a minute before the presentation, it worked. So I said, you know what, let's just try and show it. But it looks much better on here. You can actually see it. The only thing on here is he's not going beside it or behind it. And if you do go beside it, you see a side view. If you go behind it, you see a back view because it's three-dimensional. And uh, I think the first time I showed this video, I got off stage and somebody said, well, you just mocked that video up, didn't you? I said, no, you saw, I took the cover off of it. And he goes, no, you didn't take the cover off. And I'd forgotten to let the thing play. So I'm letting the whole thing play this time. Uh, and in just a minute, you'll see that when we take the cover off, yeah, the equipment's in there. And we are able to control it. We are able to turn the pumps on and off, turn the valves, see the flows coming through the meters. <coughs> um, spatial mapping. I put this in to the back because recently, you know, Microsoft has announced some more details about their device. <coughs> this is essentially what a, a spatial map looks like in, in the HoloLens of, of a room if you look at it. Um, what's interesting about the new IoT device, or what do they call it, IoT Connect 2 or something, the Connect device that's in the new HoloLens, and which is also a standalone IoT device that will connect to their Azure network, will do this. Uh, this video came out a few weeks ago. Some of you may have seen it. That's the view you're getting now. So they can show your fingers, almost see your fingernails. You can see the shirt bouncing around. That's going to be the capability of the new HoloLens, and we really feel like that's going to give us um, some opportunities to do things that we haven't done before because you'll have that fidelity that wasn't there before. It's also a lot less noise. Um, if you were able to hear what he's saying, that's one of the things he's pointing out. So you can change the device so it shows you a near view or a far away view. But regardless, when you switch into the far away view, um, it, it reduces the noise that would normally be there. But that's just one aspect of the new device that I think is going to be uh, pretty powerful. And challenges. Cool immersive technology is not enough. Don't do it because it looks cool. Um, it took me nine months to get people to use this cool technology. I knew intuitively that it was going to be useful, and now I've proved financially that it is. But it took me nine months to get somebody to trust me enough to get in front of their clients and show that. It's got to be based on delivering outcomes for the business. Um, we were way too early. Uh, maybe some of you in the room have done a lot more than this than we have, but we found that we were having to educate the population around us to even know what we were doing back then. Uh, lots of doubts early on in that first few months. Uh, integrating it into the culture is difficult. Uh, it's it does require your people who are engineers or who are salespeople or who are whatever. They have to understand that this kind of stuff isn't going away. It's only going to get, you know, faster and faster. It's going to come. You're not going to stop the process. So people have to change. Limitations with the HoloLens, obviously, out, you know, there's no out-of-the-box, uh, you know, collaborative use. That's what we created. We were the first to do it. Field of view, processing power, and the pipeline for content optimization early on, it was terrible. It's, it's much better now, and it's still not that good. Um, and interoperability with other technologies. All of this is getting solved. These are tech issues that will get solved. Uh, recommendations. <laughs> Accept technology is continuously changing at an ever-increasing velocity. Just accept it. Just go ahead, get your people on 
you know, getting them in that mindset that they're going to have to uh, uh, put new practices in, in place to embrace per, per perpetual, about to say perceptual, change. Uh, realize that how we perceive the world around us is going to change. And it, it's kind of slow right now. Five years from now, it's going to be different. People have to understand that the technology we're using and the digital content that we're going to be tapping into is going to be everywhere. Start thinking about how you can um, use these technologies. Again, we like augmented and virtual. We use those, but we really use mixed reality because we see that as where we personally, or C.D.M. Smith, think that's where it's going. Uh, because to be able to exist in the real world and work with digital content is very powerful. And start looking at how you can digitally represent things, uh, you know, digital twins, um, IoT uh, devices, anything you can start with, combining it with AI. Um, oh, there we go. I had an actual line there. Um, creating immersive experiences. Uh, again, we really believe that the new, uh, the new generation of workers, this is how they're growing up. They have mobile devices. They're some of the kids that are around now, they're going to be using VR technology and AR technology on their phones. By the time they get to the workforce, they'll be, that's going to be the way they're, they're going to learn to live and work. So with that, Captain Obvious mic drop. Any questions? Good stuff. Thank you, Scott. So any, any questions from the audience? Anybody? Yes, sir. Oh, there. yes, sir. Hello, it's Marcel from uh, Artie Shop from the Netherlands. Um, very often you have to pitch to organizations which are like governmental, local governments, etc. I can assume. Um, you're not always uh, able to show for example, via HoloLens, whatever, in the pitching process. Have you overcome that problem or you see that as a hurdle as well? It is a hurdle. Uh, and uh, the first time we, first time we, that was one of the biggest challenges I had because our folks work for years to get an opportunity to bid on a job and they get shortlisted. And then you go in for the interview and they bring their technical experts on why this facility is gonna operate well. They don't wanna give me five minutes to even have the chance of screwing a HoloLens demonstration up with them. Yes, the way we get around it is through our relationships that we develop with our clients. We start early. Uh, we, I've been visiting clients for three years and we go to our clients and we're the first in the door with it. And at the interview for it, one of the last things we do is, oh, by the way, Here's the HoloLens. Remember that technology. We're going to we're going to use this on your project, and we don't charge them. We build models for everything. I give HoloLenses out to different groups to use as needed. They give them back to me when it's over. None of them have done that yet, but assume they will. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a small investment for for helping to win the work and do the work. And quite frankly, these jobs take so long to get started. I did not realize we won our first job in December of 2016 uh, and didn't get started for a year and a half. Any questions? Yes, sir. There's a hand. Um, when, when a facility is actually finished, is there like a possible use case where you could use like the headset to just superimpose like the CAD model on top of the real world? and then use it as a way to be able to access all the BIM information in context? Like, I um, want to know more information about that component as I'm walking around the factory floor, or is it not a use case, or is it just technically not possible yet? <coughs> it's definitely a use case, and parts of that is possible. There are folks that are doing that now, but uh, to be blunt, we've not actually finished a project yet. The, the infrastructure projects we work on typically take three, four, five, six years. Um, it's being used on a billion dollar water water upgrade down in Texas where I imagine six years from now the technology is going to change a lot when they're done with it but those are all use cases that we're working on uh, and actively with some clients now uh, that's where it's going to get to so it's definitely doable it's just not as doable with the current version of technology
Well, I've taken them into facilities. Uh, I don't know if I was following the rules or not with PPE and explosion protection or whatever, but again, by the time we get finished with all the major projects that we're using it to do from collaboration, design review, uh, change orders, just 30, 60, 90 review, whatever it is, there'll be opportunities for the right clients for us to build in those types of operational and maintenance and asset management solutions. Very good. Anybody else? Please give me another question. <laughs> what do you got? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hi. Uh, interested in the IoT use case that you've shown, uh, where you are, you know, um, taking out the cover of the machine and looking at the internals and uh, uh, command control scenario. So uh, just queries how that solution is built. Is it uh, you have an IoT uh, backend, something in cloud uh, that is facilitating, or how, how is it uh, made possible? <coughs> well, that demo model is the only thing I can talk to you about. The other stuff that we're doing is under non-disclosure, but I will say it's based on a cloud solution made by a very popular company. I think it starts with an M, so. <laughs> yeah, so. No, there's no standard solutions. Not even, I mean, if you've dealt with IoT at all, there's no standard solutions. There's lots of solutions. Um, it, it, some of it will be standardized because of how we're creating the platform that it'll run on, but no. For the next few years, yes, that is standard. But it, the demonstration I'm showing you is a Raspberry Pi connected to a HoloLens application over a Wi-Fi network. What we're doing with clients has more to do with what you were asking the question of that I'm not legally able to answer to you. Okay, uh, that's about all the time we have. Got, have it a round of applause, a great presentation and a great product. Thank you so much.